Hello folks, and good morning as we begin our second day here in Mesa Verde National Park. The way this park is laid out is almost in two halves. Yesterday, most of what we were doing was in Chapin Mesa. Yeah, it's not just one green table, it's actually many, quite a few green tables here at Mesa Verde. So yesterday, Chapin Mesa. Today, we are going to explore what's towards the west of it on Wetherill Mesa. Now, as you saw yesterday, we introduced ourselves to Mesa Verde with its geography. I mean, look at this place. Stellar, outstanding views and scenery, and also a general introduction into the significance of this place, its cultural legacy, and today we're going to really go in, as I said yesterday, into the meat of the burger. We're going to be seeing some great ruins, archaeological wonders. It'll be an exciting time. preserved archaeological sites in America. There are plenty of sites and, and structures and, and houses that you might see on the iconic Mesa Verde postcards. Well worth the visit. Unfortunately though, a lot of these like longhouse and balcony house are tour only and that's not really our style on the coverage project, but there is one self-guided tour here at the Step House. Keep in mind, these are authentic remains of a culture, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Now, if you take a look above us, these are some steps. They don't look like the modern steps we use in our world, but back about a thousand years ago, these were some high quality steps. Without any livestock, well, the people here, the ancestral Puebloans, they walked everywhere, and so they had to walk from high elevation to low elevation, especially within these mesas. So how many people lived in this whole area? So it's two separate occupations, right? Like the first one probably had 25 people or so, because it was six pit houses before it um, was, you know, when it was actually built up and not uh, and excavated. This one probably had like 30 or 40 people in it, living in it, the cliff dwelling itself. Wow. And there's about 600 years in between them, right? So there's like six different cultures. Mm. Same culture, but just different generations of it. I see. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's a pretty different type of architecture and stuff. That's really pretty early. And then this is pretty, pretty late in the occupation. This is like the 1200s. 1200s. Mm -hmm. I see. So why did, why, why did they leave this area? So there's, there's probably, some pushes and some pulls and at the time of their initial like the start of the departure like the 1280s and there was a really bad drought and that was affecting this area and they were dry land farmers primarily so that was really hard to to get enough food to feed everybody in right. a drought and so that might have been kind of a push out there's also a lot of Pueblos that were around the Rio Grande that were being settled around that time mm. a little earlier so people probably we're moving there. That's where everybody pretty much ended up, was in those Rio Grande Pueblos and in Hopi in Arizona. So like oh, those I see. areas. And so people moving down there was probably either because of family and friends living there, or maybe like a response to the drought again, right. or just, uh, there's also a lot of Pueblo oral tradition that speaks of the importance of migration, how important movement is to the culture in general. I see. Yeah, yeah. so we think maybe just that. Like just the time to move on, that's what a lot of Pueblo people see it as. It's just a natural change that they were always meant to, to I through. see. That's very interesting, yeah. yeah.
So we're here continuing our adventures, seeing some great sights on the Wetherill Mesa. And the first thing I notice on this trail that we're on, looks like all these trees are dead. Doesn't just look, I'm pretty sure they are dead. It seems clear that a fire took place here. How long ago, I don't know, whether it was a controlled fire to subdue the nature. Probably not. Looked like it was more of a accidental fire or just a fire that sprung up unintentionally. And these things happen all over the Southwest. There are so many cases of fires in these national parks, especially so in Mesa Verde. They just happen and they cause a lot of catastrophic damage to the nature here. It just looks so eerie. This graveyard of a once sprawling arid forest. You all might know by now how I feel about organized tour groups, and so that's why I don't want to join one as we go through Mesa Verde, unless we have to, which we don't. But there is one way that we can get a great view of one of Mesa Verde's greatest archaeological finds. This is the Longhouse, nestled at the very cliff of this giant mesa. You can find America's second largest ancient ruin. Now, I don't know about you, but that is just a stellar sight. I'll see if I can zoom in, because on the camera I notice it's a bit different view. It might be from a bit different of a distance, so here you go. Longhouse in all of its glory. A lot of these ancient ruins of the ancestral Puebloans, they're made from a combination of sandstone and adobe. It's what they could find and make here in the Southwest. As I might have said in other places we've gone to, North America, not the best continent to find ancient ruins. Uh, you might be more lucky to find these ancient ruins in Europe, Asia, Africa. But there are places in North America, like Mesa Verde, where you can find these sites filled with hundreds of stories of past cultures and the stories of excavation and rediscovery. So we're approaching our next little attraction. And I was wondering, there's this big whole longhouse loop, but in the middle of them are all these little houses. I thought, you know, there was a fire here. Maybe they were just abandoned buildings, but no, I think they are part of the attraction. Wow, check this out. This is just amazing. Ancient sites under the roofs of these buildings that I otherwise would have thought were just abandoned. And the great thing about these sites right here is that these are much older than the houses on the cliffs that we've seen. These are pretty old. This might have been the home of those original basket maker people. Yeah, that's what they're called, basket makers. Uh, there's basket maker one, basket maker two, uh, and these were before the ancestral Puebloans. The original basket maker culture uh, resided in these here areas. Yeah, it might have looked a little different, not as dead of a forest as it is today, but these people survived off of nature. Nature was intertwined with their culture, and they were able to make, like their name suggests, baskets and also ropes and mats and other items that these people would have needed to live in this land. Let's go check another one of these houses or ruins, because there's many, not just this one. So 
So we come across more of these circular cylindrical holes. Now what these were, these were kivas. And these kivas are sacred to many tribes here in the southwest. For hundreds of years they would perform rituals and ceremonies. So it goes without saying that if you find kivas in any of these ruins or remains, it must be a very important area. These great kivas were also places where important tribal meetings would occur, given their important status in the community that there was. Uh, it's no surprise that these are also connected to various things. Maybe towers that used to stand up very tall would connect underground to these kivas. To modern knowledge, this is one of the older areas in this Badger House community. It's almost like a, a neighborhood. I wonder if it was a bit of a neighborhood back in the day, over a thousand years ago. This dates back to 700s, 800s. And these were individual homes that people lived in, right next to that kiva. You can see it all over the place here at Mesa Verde National Park. The ancient history that's still being currently excavated and researched. You could probably also imagine why this for over a century now has warranted such fascination in the minds of American explorers. So in 1906, this area was officially established as a national park. And it was the first national park with the intention of preserving a cultural wonder, not just a national wonder. And so that makes it very significant. It was so significant that in 1978, UNESCO said, hey, we're gonna step into National Park Service. You've had your fun, but we're also gonna add to the fun. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But for as much as we know about Mesa Verde, the story is not complete. There is much to be discovered here. In the thousand plus, there might be more than a thousand plus sites here at Mesa Verde. But it's considered the archaeological epicenter of America. So studies and research are still ongoing to this very present day. We're now looking at one of the first homes in Mesa Verde, going back as far as 650. Yeah, that's a long time. When the first Puebloan peoples came to this area, this was just nature, full of animals, flora, and they tamed it with a profound respect for nature, but still, they tamed it to their advantage. And over there, we see the first pit houses of its kind, the first permanent settlements here in Mesa Verde. And it's a perfect place to end the video. In the two days that we have been here at Mesa Verde National Park, we have seen our definitely at least a daily dose. We've probably got two daily doses of cultural wonder and awe. And I think this is the place to go if you really want to know as much as you can about the ancient peoples of North America. Well, although it's not directly on any interstate, it's definitely worth a visit. Go out of your way and visit Mesa Verde National Park here in Southwest Colorado. And I am very proud to call this our 13th National Park visited here on The Coverage Project. Although we're going to be taking a break from Colorado for a bit, we'll be back sooner than ever. But this is the end of our Four Corners segment. We've gone to such fun places as the Four Corners, Mesa Verde, in Monument Valley. So I think our little segment here in the Four Corners area is wrapped up pretty well. So yeah, we will be going to Colorado again, and this time other regions of Colorado, further a little bit more east than where we are right now, full of those stereotypes of Colorado, of the lush environment, the outdoors, the mountains, and a very independent-minded atmosphere. So until then, I'll just bid you adieu from these sacred areas of Mesa Verde National Park. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location.